You are watching the Movicon HMI Editor Basics self-guided video tutorial series. In this video, I'll demonstrate what to do for official CEU credit and to receive a training certificate of completion. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. In this video, I'm assuming you have already completed all of the other previous videos in the series. And now that you've completed all this training, you might want to get official credit for all your hard work. Yaskawa is accredited by the IACET organization to provide continuing education units for this course. But since this training is self-guided, we do need you to pass a test in order to get these credits. You will also receive an electronic training certification of completion. And passing the test is generally required for our sales channel certification programs. For this training, the test is for you to show that the HMI project you made in the training class actually works on a real HMI. But before you meet online with an instructor, you'll want to run through that checklist yourself. Then, when everything's working, send an email with your contact info to training at yaskawa.com and we'll schedule a short online session for you to demonstrate this checklist to the instructor. That's it. As an example of what we're looking for, I'll run my project through the certification checklist. You should verify that you can do the same with your own project. The certification checklist is not part of the class materials download. Instead, this test document is managed as a separate document and can be downloaded from our website. I have uploaded my final project to the Smart Panel HMI, and I'm connected to it over the VC Viewer. It's not absolutely necessary, but I do have the camera running. And I'll go through this certification test checklist. The first one, there's no file menu or any scroll bars on this Smart Panel HMI. I have my name, organization, and an image in the header. And I am not able to get to the setup screen. Now I did the extra logins. Even if I log in as operator, I don't have the button. And if you do have the button, that's fine. You can have the button, but you, if you click on it, it should not do anything unless you're logged in as engineer. EN1 is what we told you to use. So I will log in as EN1. EN1 password. Number six, the active user name is displayed. And I can now get to the setup screen and use the low PE button. That was number five. But number seven, if I log off and I'm still on the setup screen, these controls don't work anymore. You're prompted to log in. And I'll log back in as EN1. For the next part here on the setup screen, you can see that the IP address for the HMI and the MPIEC is displayed. That was number eight. Number nine it says with servos off, so let me turn those off. Use right servo drive parameters. If you don't turn them off, it's not gonna work. And the reboot required indicator should turn on, which it did. Then number 10, use the reboot request switch. And you should see that's going to reboot the controller. And while that's happening, let's have you close the HMI project with that button and then relaunch using the VIPA startup. This program is called VIPA startup. And just as a quick teaching point, if you go to main and exit out of here, now you're back into the Windows CE environment. And if this is what you see when you shut down the project, then you can run VIPA startup again, and it should be set to run that training project 01 project when you hit click start. I'll log in again as engineer one. Checkpoint number 12, so the mode indicator updates for each of the five main screens. I've got auto, setup, jog zero, that's manual mode. Alarms is also manual mode and recipes is production mode. That start button should only appear in production mode. If you turn the servos on, that should be reflected in the status. Number 15, position feedback on each of the axes with two digits after the decimal point, indicated in millimeters. Now number 16, you gotta go to the auto screen and set the cycles equal to one. And the default move parameters, which by the way are 180 for the velocity, 36,000 for the XLD cell and 90 for the positions. And then delay is 0.1, which is not very critical. And none of this is super critical, just to give you a starting point. It says here, hit reset and then start. I'm gonna verify that the start button illuminates during this cycle. So I'll try that again here, hit start. 
and the start button's illuminated while it's running. Now I'll move on to the jog zero screen. Number 17, the jog buttons function and are impulsive. Here's where you might want to look at the video, or you can just look at the position status. Do X forward, that seems to work, and reverse, and they're impulsive. Check the Y axis here, forward and reverse. Of course, there's going to be a delay with this system. Z axis forward, Z axis reverse. It says here number 18, one decimal place for the Bell display with unit of millimeter per second. A thousand separator with unit of millimeter per second squared here as number 19. And a reasonable range, which you can always see what the range is here by putting in something out of range, like negative one, enter. You want the velocity to be zero or higher. 100,000 is fine. And I'll escape out of this and try the same thing for acceleration. That's much higher at 100 million, but that's fine too. All right, escape out of that. And same thing with decel, negative one. Okay, good range on those. Escape out of here. Number 21, the spin should be reasonable. For the velocity, we said that was 10, so there's 210. I think I clicked twice there, 220, 210. Okay, going up by 10, and XLD cell going up by 100. That seems to be the case. Now the set zero button should function and be impulsive. This is the Z axis, and I'm at 14, so I'll click set zero, and it goes back to zero. And finally, 23 set zero, okay, and position valid are illuminated for all the axes. Z, Y, X looks good. Now on to the auto screen and symbols. Checkpoint 24, cycles complete and remaining have a suitable format and correct function. Yeah, no decimal points here for the cycles complete and remaining, please. And if you increase the cycles, the number remaining should also increase. Velocity and XL decel with decimal point as before. I'll just check these again here. Looks like the same as the Doug Zero screen here. And XL decel. I'll check that one too. Same as before. Okay. Number 26. Position X, Y, and Z have a reasonable range and include the negative values. So if I put in a negative 90 here, it should take it. And it does. Delay here should display correctly, so if it's in seconds, you should have three decimal places of resolution. If it's in milliseconds, you would not see any decimal places. And as it says here, number 28, symbols represent the machine layout. That was just that simple uh, conveyor or actuator with some kind of part. Now, it does not have to animate like this. That is not required. And number 29, this is from the very last section on symbols. You should be able to click on this button, My Screen and see position and velocity and torque feedback for all three axes. Okay, moving on now to the recipe screen. Number 30 says to save a default recipe with one cycle and default velocity. If you did the optional part, you'll have to log on as the operator. And that was, we said one cycle. Knock that down here to one and put in the defaults or somewhere close. I'll read that in here and call that default. Okay. And save. 31 says save a fast recipe with about 10 times higher cycles, velocity, XLD cell. Put in a 10 and add a zero and another zero. Add a zero to the positions also here to make them 900. 900. 900 on this one. All right. I need to read that in. And we'll save that as fast. Save. Now let's activate that for number 32 to run that fast recipe. And confirm motion is affected. So I'll hit start here. Look at the motors or just look at the feedback here. It certainly looks like it's faster. And moving further. And while that's running, let's confirm that stop works. That's number 33. Hit stop. The start button turns off and your positions may be at an intermediate point, not at zero. Now number 34, export each recipe to CSV. I'll get the fast recipe up. I'll export that first. Of course, I've done this before, as you will have also. Hit fast, replace existing, yes. And now let's load the default 
and export that one, default, and replace existing on this too. 35 was to delete the recipes and then import again. Okay, I'll delete default, confirm. I've got that confirmation, which you may not have. That's fine. I'm going to delete. All right, so my recipes are now gone. I will import them. There's fast. Of course, you have to save. And I'll import the other one called default. And then type that in here. Default. And save that one. Now I should be able to select and activate each recipe. Here's fast. I can activate that one. Here's default. I can activate that one. Okay, the last section is alarm. Number 37, produce the start pressed with zero cycles remaining alarm. That'll be in the auto screen here. I'll reset and start a cycle. Now I have zero cycles remaining and I'll hit start. Number 38, the alarm indicator turns on with the alarm. It sure did. Now before we look at it, number 39, create alarm AD0 on each axis X, Y, and Z. That means you go into the setup screen, turn on low PE, go to jog zero, do the X axis first, we'll try to jog it, and now we check the alarm. The text is cut off a little bit, and that's fine, we're not judging you on that. We should be able to, number 40, clear the servo axis alarm with the button in the setup menu. So let's go here to setup, and hit clear alarm. Now back to alarms, that does not take away the fact that there was an alarm in this screen, so you can just use acknowledge all, reset all, Let's do a couple of these other axes here. Servos on again, and this time jog the Y axis. Actually, it looks like I've already got an alarm on the Z axis. So let's check the alarms. Okay, we'll acknowledge that one. Reset. I'll turn the servos off here. And jog zero will do the Y axis this time. Servos on. There's that Z axis alarm again. Let me clear that one more time. Reset all. If you get that, just turn off the low PE when you turn the servos on, and then turn it back on again. And let's jog the Y axis. Okay, now we've got the alarm on the Y axis. And in one of these here, you should be able to look at the alarm history, get history. And we've been doing it here before. Number 43, the last question, be sure that you can acknowledge all and reset all alarms in the alarm screen. And that is the end of the test. Of course, if you have any issues to iron out, take care of those, and then send us an email at training.yaskawa.com, and we'll check it out for you and get you marked off for official credit. Thank you for watching this video, and please go to www.yaskawa.com HMI for more information on Yaskawa's HMI products and Movicon HMI Editor.